Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the end of the world. This is Bad News with Musin Yasalada, where I guide you through the process. It's another week of joy, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've had a good week. I hope you've had time to reflect on all the beautiful things in your life. But today we return to the darkness, to the strange, the weird, the wonderful. Royal Minders on red alert over Charles and Camilla's secret love child after he sends them an ominous warning for their trip to Australia. So this geezer is claiming to be King Charles and Camilla's love child. How exciting. Scroll down and show him what he looks like, Viraj. So that's him as a young boy. Scroll down a bit more and we can see him now. Look at that handsome boy with his daddy. What do you think, Raj? Does he look like him? The eyes give it away. If he is, if he is, yeah, so what? But how would you have a worse hairline than your dad? I think that's how it generally goes, no? Natural erosion over the years. Yeah, but... It's not looking good. But the King's is pretty good. Well, one was raised in royalty and the other one was left to slum it in Australia without his rich daddy. I'm on King Charles' side on this. Mm. What is the point of being royalty if you can't neglect a few of your children? What is the point? He deserves some benefits from the situation. You're out there. You were married to Diana. That was fun for a bit. Didn't work out. Don't know what happened to her in the end. I think she, I think she retired somewhere in Thailand and writes novels from there. And she lived happily ever after and no one ever bothered her. And then... King Charles married his baby girl, Camellia, as my mum calls her. And everyone was happy. But there was a baby involved. That the Queen, according to this article, may disappear. This man's great-grandmother, or some shit, worked for the Queen. And she ensured that this love child was never found out about. Because King Charles couldn't keep his willy out of Camellia while married to Diana. That's so mad to me, bro. It's still so mad to me. You've got Diana. Do you know how sexy Diana was, Viraj? Was sexy woman. She was cute. You know when she'd make that shy face? She was like, I'm shy. <laughs> oh, saucy. I didn't realize how sexy she was until I started watching The Crown. And I started watching old videos. And I was like, Diana. Good looking woman. Good looking woman. And she'd race people at like sports day and stuff. She was a proper mum. Proper mum. Proper down to earth mum. Well, as far as we know. Kissing people with AIDS on the forehead. No shit's given. Out here. Look at those chubby fingers. He's probably fathered a lot of babies with those fingers. And the question, the question for the audience. Should the king of England or Britain, whatever it is, have to look after his children. Should the king of Britain have to look after his children? I say the answer is no. Otherwise, what is the point of being the king of England? If I'm the king of England, I don't want to look after any of my kids. Nannies, private schools, affairs, seven marriages, trust funds, money in Ireland. Epstein's Island. Wouldn't go there myself, but it's there as an option. You should have those choices as the king. You should be able to sit on your throne the throne, in this case, being a toilet with your crown, saying, I'm the king of England. There are people with a lot less who don't have to look after their kids. Yep. So why shouldn't, why should he have to look after all of his children? If you're the king of England, you know how many, <laughs> you're not using a condom. <laughs> it's not dignified. It's not dignified for the king of England to use a condom. That's poverty. What's he going to do? Stop. Is he going to stop? No. no. There'd have to be um, the Royal Condom Commissioner in the room who puts on a Royal Condom for him. Do you think he has, you know, they have the, the coat of arms for like Waitrose and all of Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You think it's one of the yeah, yeah, and it's got to be Durex. No, 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 it's got to be Magnum <laughs> for his big incestuous penis. <laughs> I mean, if those are the size of his fingers, you can only imagine the size of his cock. <laughs> 
the royal throne that Camilla sits on. I'm I'm never getting invited to the royal variety show. That's that ship has sailed. Funny. Once you've said the royal penis, I used to dream about that as a kid. I used to think, oh, one day I want to be on that. Because I used to watch the Royal Variety Show when I was a kid. I'd be like, I want to be on the Royal Variety Show. That looks sick. Saw Michael McIntyre on it. And I was like, I want to be on that. And then I actually became a comedian. I looked, took one look at my content and I was like, I ain't getting invited on. It is an important question that we need to ask ourselves as a society. Do we want a king who looks after his kids? That's boring. The royal family is literally only there for entertainment purposes. They are not there to set a good example, like some people believe. They are the biggest drama in town. We watch it on the edge of our seats. You either love them or you hate them, but you have an opinion. You need to have an opinion. Otherwise, what is the point of any of this? You need to have an opinion. So really, the king doing this for us is an act of service for the British public because he's providing yet another drama for us to enjoy. Does he or does he not have an illegitimate kid in Australia who's now 58? By the way, right, how does this guy even know? He has no evidence. If you go through the article, he says he's going to confront them. And say what? I don't know exactly what his plan is there. Let's read it. What am I going to do this time? Mr. Dorant Day said in May. Well, I'd be a very silly person to not take action when he comes into the same jurisdiction as me. That's him saying, listen, if you're in my town, mate, if you're in my town, mate, <laughs> that means you're going to play by my rules. But I think I'd be even sillier to reveal my hand prematurely. Oh, this guy's asking for trouble. Yeah, he's definitely on the list. I think they've already said he's on a secret list. I like how the Daily Mail said he's on a secret list. If it's such a secret, how do you know about it, you silly Daily Mail people? <laughs> My love-hate relationship with the Daily Mail will continue, by the way. Also, I like that his name is um, double-barreled, like his mumsy. Because she was Camilla Parker Bowles. And he's Mr. Dorant Day. From Australia, mate. How did he end up in Australia? That's a really good point. To be fair, it is on brand for the royal family to send people they don't want around to Australia. Yep. So maybe he's onto something. Maybe they were just tra <laughs> carrying on with old traditions. Send this bastard baby to Australia. I don't think this would be the first time they hid children. I think in The Crown they touched on some disabled children who were in the royal family being hidden. Look that up. Disabled children of the royal family hidden. I think that was a whole thing. Disabled children of the royal family hidden. This is where we see your porn history. Oh, no, we do. But zoom in on that for me. The third... <clears throat> the third and fifth daughters of John and Federina Bowles Lyon. John being the elder brother of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Both women were born with severe developmental disabilities. Neither learned to talk. So they're not a secret. They're just not really put in the... No, they're just cousins. They're just cousins. And they kept them away from the limelight, probably because they didn't think it was very royal for someone to be disabled. I like to think we've moved on from that. Mm -hmm. But what's worse for the royal family? A cousin with disabilities or a son from Australia? A son from Australia, it seems. The royal family would probably deem the son from Australia even worse. It wouldn't be dignified to have an illegitimate child from the other side of the Commonwealth. It wouldn't be dignified. Anyway, they do look alike. He looks more like his mummy, I'd say. Don't know if he's got his daddy's ears because they're covered there. Mm. He's got his dad's smile, that's yeah, for he sure. Does, he, does, he, does a, he does have the ears. Could be his son, you know. Could be, could be. Like, it's a really good photo. Fuck it, I'm their son as well. I don't think no, no, no. I'm in. That's my new marketing angle. I'm King Charles's son. I've got similar hairstyle, to be fair. Look. Ready? Shall I do the smile? Ready? Look. What do you think? I think you don't have a chance now. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get in there, right? I'm going to marry a black woman just to piss them off even further. And then I'm going to die off the controversy. Uh huh. That's my plan. 
<sighs> the backlash makes me horny. Okay, moving on. Let's move on to brighter news. Tilt to the left, please, Viraj, so I can read see the whole article. No, up so I can see the headline, Viraj, you silly goose. Okay. There we go. Stop swanning around, Viraj, Jesus. <laughs> it's an inside joke for us. Um, okay, let's move on, shall we? Has everyone made their notes on the first section? Because it will be in the exam. We should have exams, you know. We can do that. I we can, can definitely do that. Do that. I, can, I can make those. Yeah, what have I said today? That'd be fun. Tory politician's wife jailed for race hate posts, and it's not fair. She's a white woman, Viraj. It's not fair. She should be able to threaten to burn down an, a, a, an asylum home, whatever it was, a hotel. It's not fair. It's not fair, Viraj. She's a white woman. She should be able to threaten to burn down a hotel full of immigrants. That's her duty. She's fighting back against something. Not entirely sure what it is as of yet that these people are so upset about, but they're sick of it. Mm. Mass deportation now. Set fire to all the effing hotels full of those probably migrants for all I care. She doesn't care anymore, Viraj. She's fed up. While you're at it, take those treacherous governments and politicians with them. I feel physically sick knowing what families will now have to endure. If that makes me racist, so be it. Oh, you know what? If that gets you a criminal conviction, so be it as well, darling Lucy. And obviously the far right are very upset that she's gone to prison because she's a mother. She's a mum, Viraj. Next tweet, please, Viraj. She's a mum and she was denied bail to be with her kids. And she's got two and a half years to be there. She'll be out in one year for sending an offensive tweet. Was it just offensive? Was it? Or did she try and incite burning down a hotel full of innocent people? Scroll back up. We don't need to see more of them saying the same thing. This was um, posted by Summit 4567890. Seems legit. Glad that he's getting... And how many times was it retweeted, Viraj? Retweeted. Five times, 364 views. I'm glad we're hearing from Summit 546-247 barcode. I'm glad we get to hear from him. She should be able to incite violence because what could go wrong? Viraj, what has ever gone wrong with someone trying to incite violence online? Absolutely. Nothing, right? Nothing. Nothing. Not mob lynchings in India? No. Nope. Not basically... A mass murderer of innocent Muslims in Myanmar? That never happened. Maybe an insurrection in, in the US because Donald Trump told everyone to go to the White House. Did that happen? I'm not sure. Was there a riot a couple of months ago, Viraj, because of some false information about people online? Did that happen? I don't think that happened. So maybe people should just be able to say what they want. What could go wrong? I'll tell you what. What in history has ever gone wrong with someone inciting violence? Hmm. Words, they're just words It's freedom of speech We should be able to say what we want It's just words If you're too sensitive Maybe you should not read anymore And yet it's those people calling everyone else sensitive Who are on social media Calling For her jail time to be rescinded I think two and a half years is long enough I honestly don't care as long as she's punished. But these people don't want her to be punished at all. Because what has ever gone wrong? Maybe I don't know anything about this situation. Maybe I didn't do a PhD for four years on the consequences of extremism and violent narratives. Maybe I know nothing about this. And maybe Summit 4567890 has something in mind that I'm missing. But last time I checked, there's pretty good evidence to suggest that social media violence ends up in real world violence. We have solid evidence to suggest that now. There's been countless studies that have shown the relationship between people trying to organize, mobilize violence online and real world violence. Those are just some case studies I gave you. What happened in Myanmar? Mass lynchings of Muslims during COVID in India because of WhatsApp messages going around blaming Muslims for COVID, 
right? The recent riots we had that uh, blamed a, a very unfortunate, disgusting event on a child, on a Muslim man. Or a Muslim group of people, whatever it was. But maybe I'm missing something. Maybe they are just words. And it has no real consequences. Or maybe it bloody does. And maybe you should get your head out of your ass and you start realizing that words have consequences. And if you believe in freedom of speech, you also believe in consequences. You can say what you want, there might be consequences for it. And then you see nonsense like this, full of logical fallacies that are very kindly listed here. 30 convicted pedophiles have walked free from UK courts in the past two weeks alone. All had category A images of child abuse. But a Tory councillor, little what about, wife has been jailed for 31 months over a fucking tweet, right? Listen, scroll up, let's read the logical fallacies, Viraj, and I'll go through them one, one by one. Right, first logical fallacy here, false equivalence compares unrelated legal case, not the same issue, right? Apples and oranges, both have the, both should be dealt with and both probably will be dealt with. They will probably get a longer um, prison sentence as well, those people. Emotional appeal. She's a mum. She's a mum. What does that have to do with anything? Nonsense. Broad claim based on two cases. If you go go through this guy's Twitter, which we won't, right? It's full of this notion that Muslims um, significantly are more likely to conduct paedophile activities than other people. That's the... I don't think he said that outright, but that's the vibe he's trying to create. That's the message he's trying to send out, and I'm sick of it. Because there is no good evidence to suggest this to be true. There wasn't five years ago, there wasn't one now, there wasn't one ten years ago. There's been quite a few studies and um, inquiries into this now, and there's no good evidence to suggest that religious orientation predicts you being a paedophile. Just like being a Catholic doesn't make you a paedophile, being a Muslim doesn't disproportionately make you a paedophile. Get this out of your head. It's nonsense. It's ridiculous. And it's just used as a method to attack Muslims as a whole. It's boring. I hope most people now see through it. But unfortunately, a lot of people on social media don't. And you don't need a majority of people to lead to some really bad things happening, as we saw in August. But she's a mum. She's the wife of a politician. She's a child minder. She looks after children when she's not re making racist tweets online, calling for a hotel to be burnt down with probably children in it. She's a mum. Oh. But that's the world we live in. There's not much you can do about this, apart from look at the evidence. Social media violence, words on social media can lead to real world violence. There's strong evidence for that. If I went into a town centre and was trying to mobilise people to attack a group of people in the street, would you want me arrested? Mm -hmm. You probably would. So if I go to a massive town square, which gives me access to millions of people, hundreds of millions of people. Millions billions of people, and I start shouting to call for violence against a group of people, should I be in trouble for that? What's probably going to be more effective as well? Me shouting in a local town centre or me shouting about on social media where I have access to way more people? Should you not be concerned about that? I think you should be. And if you're not concerned about that, it's because your worldview doesn't allow you to be because you've got bigger issues in mind. Your problem with immigrants and your problem with Muslims in general and ethnic minorities is bigger than the problem you have with people talking violently on social media about other groups of people. So you're prioritizing your needs over the safety of others. You've made a list of what's important to you and you've ignored all the evidence to the contrary, which is very common. It's called worldview motivated reasoning. Maybe look it up. Assess it and look within yourself to see if you do it, you silly gooses. Anyways, next topic. Okay. Liam Payne falling memes are a disgusting indictment of Gen Z. 
I'm going to read that again because I read it weirdly. But Liam Payne falling memes are a disgusting indictment of Gen Z. It's not just Gen Z. Let's not blame Gen Z for this. It's people in general, right? If Gen Z are making memes, the old twats are writing rude things as well, right? Here's the problem with the situation when a celebrity dies on what we now believe to be some sort of drug-fueled escapade, right? This guy, Liam, Liam had problems for a while, it seemed like. And whenever he went on and done an interview, he was mocked. Relentlessly. The piss was taken out of him. Now, if someone is clearly struggling with drug problems, should you be mocking them on social media? Probably not. Not very nice. Even if they are rich. Oh, it comes with the territory. Does it, though? He was in a boy band. He's made a lot of money. Maybe let's not be pricks, though. And what's that going to do? If you do have a an alcohol and a drug problem, that's, you know, it was never really over, but we all kind of sensed there was something there, and there were some articles to suggest that, that he was having problems. Should we really be pushing him more? What's that going to do to his drug problem? It's probably going to make it worse. I don't think it helps. Don't think it's ideal. But that's the world we live in. They did it with Caroline Flack. And then suddenly everyone's coming out and saying, oh, sh she was beautiful. She was this. The same people who were writing the tweets were writing the, um, the obituary. The same people who write the tweets will write the obituary. Which is the problem with social media. I don't think we should blame Gen Z for this, right? The world has become a stage for sure. And if you're a celebrity, you're kind of asked to play this game. And Gen Z is in this weird position now where they blur trolling and reality. Gen Z nowadays, they have three accounts. They have their public facing account. They have their friends and family account. And then they have their trolling account. This is a thing. Kids nowadays, they have a whole account just for trolling on t TikTok where they can write mean things consequence free. Is that their fault or is that lack of education? Probably lack of education. Their kids, they're going to do what they want to do. I used to write the weirdest things on Facebook. The weirdest things. I used to call people out for fights on Facebook in school. I'd be like, Steve, meet me outside the school gates at four o'clock for a scrap on Facebook, liked by my mum. <laughs> mum comments, okay, I pick you up later today then. Good times. I found one tweet, yeah, from like 2009 where I just wrote, can't believe how many guys really like you. Sad face. I was 13. Just venting. Venting online. That's how we grew up. Gen Z, they're doing a similar thing, but from a troll account. But can we really blame them? Because the schools aren't doing anything to educate them properly on TikTok because they have no clue. You can't educate Gen Z on social media. They know it better than you do. What are you going to do? You're going to put a little block on it as a parent. They have an app. You're, <laughs> they have an app to get through it. They know what they're doing. The other day, my niece, she's two and a half years old. She was watching a family vlog on YouTube. At two and a half years old, what's she comparing? <laughs> She's looking at this family vlog like, my family doesn't do this. I wish we lived by the beach. But that's the problem we live in. These people feel very comfortable to insult someone, make memes, because it's consequence free. And maybe if social media had more consequences, these things wouldn't happen. Weren't we just talking about that five minutes ago? Brat Summer, Liam Payne, Fall, Ethel Kane, whoever, Ethel Kane Winter, it has 15,000 likes. Yep. It is tragic. It's very sad. But that's the world we live in. And I'm sure Liam Payne's family aren't hurt by it because they're probably used to it. And they're just focusing on what really matters. Very sad times. And that's everything for today. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've had a good time. I hope you're ready to have a good week. And I'll ruin it for you next Monday with some more bad news. That's the new system here. You have a good week. 
I ruin it for you on a Monday. Have another good week. I ruin it again. Make sure you like and subscribe. We haven't told anyone to like and subscribe to this. We should tell them to like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Let's make this a success. Let's do something good with our lives. So I can also write some racially fueled tweets on social media. I can't wait to start to hit my... Um, when my career starts going badly, I'm just going to start being uh, controversial on social media. That's going to be my new thing, right? If comedy doesn't work out, I'm just going to write some racially questionable things on social media. Just to push the button. I'll get on GB News. I'll have a good time. I'll write some dodgy stuff and I'll get a following. Next thing you know, I'm being interviewed on Trigonometry and I've got a Patreon full of 10,000 people. It's going to be great. That's a new career move now. Did you know this, Viraj? Say dodgy stuff, gain the following of 10,000 Patreons, live your life until you eventually get jailed or sued for everything you're worth. 10,000 people with five pounds a month sounds like a good... Maybe we need to start saying some more dodgy shit. Yeah, Let's you... start with the Turks. Get rid of all the Turks. Get rid of them all. Start with my family. <laughs> I can snitch on a few people if you need me to. Rod, do you want to get rid of any Indians, you know? It's a couple of Let's start with your brother. I've never liked him. Scumbag. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to this podcast. It's been bad news with Muslim Yasaladi. The end of the world is near. We are going to go through it together. I hope you have a lovely week. I'll ruin it for you next Monday. Stay safe. Use a condom unless you're the king, in which case, go out there and father as many kids as you can possibly father with your sausage fingers. I hope that man in Australia finds his daddy kisses on the lips and he becomes king eventually i hope that does happen lucy enjoy prison um i really hope you're not in a prison cell uh, full of black and brown people because i don't think that's going to go very well for you lucy who else and that's it thank you for coming Shh.